Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We start with the future of the BBC and pressure to reveal its top star salaries and plans to scrap the corporation's trust. The Culture Secretary, John Whittingdale, will set out the government's vision in Parliament this morning. He's expected to announce an increase in the licence fee and a charge for the iPlayer service. Our entertainment correspondent, Lucy Cotter, with this. Marks. Get set. Mark. The battle over the future of the BBC has been raging for months. Now the Culture Secretary, John Whittingdale, is expected to set out a tough new remit. You made a mistake threatening me. The BBC Trust is likely to be scrapped, with Ofcom taking over regulation. And rumours are rife he'll scale down the website, impose a subscription on the iPlayer and crack down on ratings wars, even interfering with scheduling and demanding distinctiveness. It is a huge public intervention. It's 3.7 or is it £4 billion pounds of public money? And you'd have, in a mixed economy, of course you have to be concerned, quite, ro quite rightly and properly, about the impact that has on would-be commercial competitors. The deal on the licence fee is already done. The government made the BBC foot the £700 million cost of free licences for the over 75s. So this white paper is becoming increasingly politically charged. The BBC tells news to the public that the government does not want them to know and it tells it in ways that they don't like. That's standard, that is democracy. The idea that you will suddenly regulate the BBC and try and get rid of it because you don't like it really feeble. It is, the, it is the absolute lifeblood of the creative industries here and to strip it away is insane to me. It should be, it should be protected and cherished. The Academy Award I've won this year, these awards, they're, they're, I have the BBC to thank for that. This week the BBC won 14 BAFTAs, including one for EastEnders, but the last decade has been the worst in its history. The devastating Jimmy Savile scandal, huge cuts and hundreds of job losses, as well as controversy over payouts and bad behaviour of BBC stars. This is direct television from the studios at Alexander Palace. When the BBC was set up in 1922, its remit was to inform, educate and entertain. Over the last hundred years, while the BBC's values have remained, the industry has transformed. As the commercial sector has grown, we've seen a rapid rise in its competitors and questions are now being raised over the true purpose of the BBC and whether it really should be all things to all people. The media landscape has transformed beyond all recognition. From a handful of terrestrial channels, consumers now have hundreds of options. 46% of people subscribe to a streaming service and many don't watch TV at all. One third and half of millennials watching online or on a mobile. These seismic changes have fuelled the government's case for modernisation, but such is the passion of the corporation's supporters, the fallout from today's announcement could be damaging for both the BBC and the government. Lucy Cotter, Sky News. OK, well, let's go to our senior political correspondent. There's Beth Rigby, and she's uh, in Westminster for us this morning. Uh, Beth, what can we expect this morning? Well, big meaty document, this white paper. The government have been working on it for months. One of the biggest public consultations uh, they've ever had because people really care about the BBC. Now, the sort of big headline uh, points that will be made today on the licence fee, it's been frozen for six years. It will start to rise with inflation from 2017 onwards. This was a deal struck between Lord Hall, the Director General of the BBC, and George Osborne when he asked the BBC last summer to take on the cost of funding the over 75s free TV licences. So uh, BBC licence fee payers, which is basically all of us, should expect 
their license fee to increase. The other big thing is on the iPlayer loophole. This has been a big issue for the BBC because uh, with technology, people can watch BBC on catch-up services and they don't have to pay their £145 license fee every year to do so. The BBC say this is costing them about £150 million a year and the, B the government are going to allow the BBC to close that loophole so you can't watch for free on catch-up anymore. You have to pay a license fee. Uh, another big issue for the BBC has been governance. Uh, the big change today will be that uh, for the first time in its history, it will have an external regulator. It will be regulated by Ofcom, which regulates all the broadcasters, and it will have a unitary board, so a chairman sitting in the BBC like a public company has. And then the final thing, the big point, is on pay transparency and disclosure. Uh, the public give the BBC £3.7 billion a year in money, in the licence fee, and the government want the BBC to be more transparent over how they use that money. So, as we reported yesterday, more transparency on what some of the biggest stars are being paid. If you earn over 450000 a year from the BBC, you've got to start disclosing what you actually do get. Uh, and also, the BBC might be opening their books to the uh, National Audit Office uh, so that they can take a close look at the BBC accounts. Final point for BBC viewers, uh, Lord Hall does have to find 50, 550 million in annual savings by 21-22. And that does mean that there will be cuts to services. So we could see some news channels being cut potentially, changes to radio, changes to sort of what sports we see on the BBC. But that's not for today. Lord Hall is going to announce later this year about where those cuts will fall. And if I could just correct you on a point of order there, Beth, um, the licence fee, £145, you said, and 50p, 145.50. I, I, I did know that. I just thought it was a bit uh, cumbersome to add the 50p in, so I rounded down. Yeah. You see, it's because of people like you that BBC could be losing out on all that extra dosh. That's, that's the thing. But, Beth, let me ask you, that works out at about 40p a day. Just briefly, uh, you know what? People don't wake up in the morning and say, you know, I'm, the world's not going to survive because of the BBC licence and it's not part of people's, it's not top of their list of priorities. Why is it so high up the political agenda? Why is Whittingdale making this such a big talking point? Well, I think part of the issue has been the timing of charter renewal uh, and general elections. Uh, the Charter runs every 10 years uh, for the BBC and it came up this year at the time of an election. Uh, and that has made it quite difficult politically because the government has felt that, you know, they maybe want to come down quite hard on the BBC. The BBC have felt under political pressure because of the timing of these negotiations uh, with the government right. over their future. OK, Beth, thank you very much indeed for the update there. No doubt we'll be hearing from you well throughout the morning. Thank you. Let's get back to this BBC situation and what the government announcements are going to be today. Uh, you'll recognise this man's voice uh, from <laughs> Magic Radio and uh, a former Radio 2 DJ for many, many years, Richard Allenson. Richard, good to see Aaron, you. Good morning. Um, Richard, um, it's, it's a, I mean, you know, look, you've worked for the BBC, I've worked for the BBC, Sarah Jane's worked for the BBC, we've all been there at some stage in time. And as Sarah Jane was saying earlier, people think when you're not with them, somehow you're rivals and therefore it's not in your interest to promote them. But, but actually, it's in all of our interests to have that sort of competition, mm. isn't it? Well, we're rivals with everybody. Presumably you'd like people watching you rather than the movie channel right now. So, I mean, you know, yes. it's the same company. But certainly, I don't think anybody of us, and we're a similar age, we wouldn't be here without it. Because it not only created the template for all the commercial competitors that came along, yeah. but also it was such a huge influence in my, in my growing up. Look, my friend, absolutely, I totally agree with you. And rather than turn this into some sort of fawning fest about the BBC, which I could do, I mean, I wrote yeah. my autobiography and I devoted yeah, a whole chapter <laughs> to TV Centre um, in London, for instance. But that was then, this is now, times have changed, viewing habits just so, so different. Mm. And the idea that we all sit down and have the shared experience is gone, isn't it? Well, it depends. Um, you can have the shared experience with the box set. You yeah. might not be watching a live TV programme. There yeah. are live events, you'll get X Factor, you'll get Strictly, you'll get Bake Off. 
but that's because the competition has been there. And I think if independence didn't come along, then the BBC wouldn't have created Strictly. Um, it didn't have X Factor to fight. And if the BBC wasn't there in the beginning, then ITV and Channel 4 and Sky wouldn't have come along and had a go at it as well. Yeah. And a lot of reaction that we're getting on social media this morning, Richard, is that the BBC in its current mode is very old-fashioned. Consumers now of uh, radio programmes, TV programmes, websites, um, have consumer choice. They can pay-per-view, if you like, or pay-per-listen. They choose what they want and they just pay for that. So a lot of people getting in touch today are saying, we don't want to pay for all of it. We might just watch the dramas. We might just watch the sport. We might just listen to one radio station. We'd be happy to pay for that, but we don't want to pay it across Wait, the board. Based on like a Sky model. Yeah, yeah. So of Netflix, for example. You just yeah. pay for that. You might not pay to watch Amazon or Sky, but you... Consumers have choice now, and BBC haven't moved with the times. No, you're right. That's spot on. You guys are brilliant at marketing, and what you sell and the price you charge for it is, is genius. And the BBC just has this... It doesn't have to earn its money. It has to convince the occasional government that it needs the licence fee, and that's the only model they've really considered, I think, at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what seems to have happened this morning is... Um, well, it's a lot of hot air from the government, because they said, they'd, they, said they would basically pull it apart that's what they've almost promised and um, now they're not really doing much they're sort of tinkering with the edges a bit should they be tinkering with scheduling the way they're talking about um, big programs like strictly in competition with X Factor yeah that doesn't I don't think that helps anybody because it annoys the listener and the viewer because they can't watch one's on they've got to record another and also you going back to what you said earlier about that let's all sit down as a family and watch yeah. X Factor or something. It doesn't maximise the audience for either. OK, so you're out there in the independent sector now in the commercial sector. Um, do we need the BBC? Are you in favour of the BBC? Yeah, big fan. Big time. Big fan. Because I, it's unique. There isn't another organisation like it on earth. There isn't anybody else that is so independent. And I think its job is to throw bottles at the government of the day. I mean, it, it, in 1926, Ramsay MacDonald accused it of bias. And every government since then has had a, a sort mm. of a, an angle on the BBC. OK. Richard Allison from Magic Radio. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Formerly of uh, Radio 2. I've been